England versus Sri Lanka. Big game for the Sri Lankans to stay in contention for the semi-final slot. Let's talk all about that game here at Time Out with Sports Adda. Arun, England seem to be in red-hot form and uh, Sri Lanka really need to stay in the competition. Uh, tough, tough game for Sri Lanka coming up. It, it, it's one of those do-order die games, Akil. Yes, England are in red-hot form. Uh, they're unstoppable at the minute. Uh, but the fear is this. Uh, while everybody's appreciated their approach, the fear is that they've not been tested so far. Uh, it's almost been all smooth sailing. So, uh, the fear is what if they happen to come up against that one bad day where they're 50 for 4 or 60 for 4 like so many other teams have, have ended up being. Yeah, that that is that has been the fear for their white ball game since since three four years when when Ian Morgan actually started this out. But the difference here is is what I am seeing and what I am feeling is uh, their bowling is actually bowling is actually standing up better than better than expected. Chris Jordan has been fantastic. Mohin Ali has been fantastic. Uh, Chris Wokes has been outstanding. So three bowlers in form, and then there is Adil Rashid who's always consistent in white ball. He will always deliver. He is very rarely has bad days. So the only problem that they have, Liam Livingston is bowling beautifully. He's bowling like spin, off spin. So four bowlers bowling well. So they just have to figure whether getting one more bowler to replace the Timel Mills. That's that's why they are looking more dangerous than any other team because their bowling is firing. Yeah, you're right. I was just looking through the numbers. You know what they've done so far in the tournament, Akhil. Just looking at the last three games they've played. In the first game against West Indies, it was Adil Rashid, who, who was the best bowler with four, four wickets. Against Bangladesh, it was Timur Mills, who picked up three wickets. And then there was, against Australia, it was Chris Jordan. Uh, we're talking about the best bowler, bowlers in each of those three matches. We're not even talking about, we've not even seen a Chris Wokes' name, who's yeah. been perhaps their best bowler consistently. Uh, yeah. Also, you know, just before the game against Australia, there was talk, uh, if if Mark Wood could could make his way into the eleven, I don't know why England is so desperately waiting on Mark Wood when this bowling attack is firing. But but yeah, I mean, who do they leave out if they want to get Mark Wood in? Like I mean, it looks like he's their first choice player. So so yeah, bowling firing. But where will Mark Wood come in? Who which player will he come in for? Also, what has been interesting is. Uh... Against the Australian team, we were speaking about David Warner finding some form. Uh, he's been very, very crucial for the Australian team. But for this England team, there's been a big change with Josh Butler opening the innings. And the way he batted, very, very encouraging signs. Because again, there are very few batsmen like Josh Butler at the top of the order. You know, when he would get away the team to a start, uh, it's unlikely that England will lose a game. So, Huge, huge plus point. Butler got runs against a very good attack, so his confidence will be on a on a very high on a very high level now. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And they they approach is simple, Akila. I mean that that's we spoke about intent. You know, in the pitch report of the India New Zealand game, uh, what is the difference between Australia and England was the intent. Uh, yes, England is chasing a small target, but but the fact that Josh Butler. And Jason Roy came out with that attitude saying, we are coming for you. We are gunning for you guys. Uh, yeah. They were charging down to Hazelwood, Akil. I mean, Hazelwood is like a machine. They were charging down to Pat Cummins. So, that's that's intent for you. Uh, and I think that's their style. It's kind of ingrained into their system now that no matter what the situation, this is the way we'll play. Go after the bowlers from ball one. Okay, that 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 is absolutely correct. Uh, their opponent Sri Lanka started off well in the tournament. Uh, they seem like a side around. They have a good side, but they might be a side which might be better prepared for the next T20 World Cup. In in my opinion, because they have a lot of good players who just need a lot little more exposure to finish off games, to stand up at the at, at the tough moments and finish off games. Uh, but th this squad that they have built together is a very very nice core. Very very. It's, it's a unit which looks very strong. With a little more experience, they can be a world-class team. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Akil. The, the lack of experience is showing. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily agree with everything you said in that there are maybe there, there are question marks about a couple of players there. 
uh, sure. they've had troubles and you know they can't just keep persisting with the same players over a period of time uh, it might not necessarily be with players in the 11 uh this kusal pereira who who to me has underachieved uh, yeah. kusal pereira had had ability when he came in we saw him saw him get runs at the international level but just hasn't delivered to his potential uh, looking outside the squad as well this dinesh chandibal who they persisted with for years uh, mm-hmm. again there comes a point in time where you need to look beyond uh, and yeah. i think there are one or two players in that lineup who who's whose careers are on the line in this tournament yes but again the players that we always look for when sri lanka plays uh, hasaranga yes the, the magician leg spinner from sri lanka uh, him bowling to the england england batters is going to be fun because he doesn't shy away from a battle and if you if you realize uh, when in, when sri lanka toured england last year Uh, or earlier this year is is actually when we started to notice hasaranga the extra responsibility that he took on and now he's become such a core part bowling those leg spinners in important times so him bowling to the england lineup is going to be fun to watch it, it, it it's really going to be fun to watch you know today could be england's biggest test you spoke about one in the hasaranga we, we both a big fan of his but there's also mahesh tikshana uh, there's yeah. a bit of mystery about him and england like i mentioned and not not encountered that kind of quality attack so quality spinners at least so today could be a, a, a real stern test for england also remember they're playing in sharja akil where the surfaces haven't been the most batting friendly surfaces so yeah england will be tested today is what what i think it will be well for sri lanka it's a must win but england are sitting quite pretty in the points table Uh, do you think there might be some experimentation for england to try maybe a neon morgan higher up the order to just give him some batting form <laughs> if they lose a wicket i mean are they losing a wicket uh, i don't know but i don't know england have anyway been experimenting okay not for the sake of experimentation but their focus is beyond net run rate if you remember in that game against west indies they they reshuffled the batting order so they could go after and get those quick runs 56 i think it, it was they needed yes uh, again in the last game malan i think came out early against australia so so they're not experimenting is experimenting but they're playing their cards smartly based on the situation keeping an eye on the net run rate as well because they know this group is that tight not that they do they don't know have to do it anymore but but the batting order is not set in stone is what i'm trying to say you know you could you could have anybody walking at any situation Now you could have a Johnny Besto walking in in a three. You could have a Morgan walking in a three. You could have uh, a Moin Ali walking in a three. We've not seen that, but that's quite possible as well. So, so England are pretty flexible in that that manner. Uh, no experimentation for me. Hmm, interesting. If if I had a choice, I would definitely get your Morgan to bat maybe at a three. Just give him five six overs of batting peacefully. He's had such a rough time. in the indian t20 league and he's not really had a chance to bat here freely so i would definitely try that uh, i i've been really impressed with chris jordan also i would uh, not really spoken about a lot uh, he is not he doesn't play regularly in the 50 over format where where england already have too many riches there but he's been an in- impact player he's been bowling those yorkers pretty well uh, real real find in in the absence of jofra archer they must have been worried for the one bowler to give them those end overs and jordan not spoken of enough but outstanding here's the thing akil uh, honestly i've always felt jordan's been a hyped up kind of a bowler uh, hmm. and my impression was mainly formed on the basis of his showing in the indian t20 league uh, but sure. when it comes to england when it comes to playing in the england t20 circuit his numbers are fabulous i i just cannot understand like several other players you know there's, there's the likes of david miller uh, even glen maxwell i can i can put in the same basket as well players who uh, who achieve at a certain level but who kind of been uh, under achievers in the indian t20 league so jordan uh, i always had question marks over jordan's ability but but you're right when it comes to t20 internationals and when it comes to playing under morgan he somehow delivers the goods somehow produces those yorkers on demand Mm, you you watch you watch you got sir you also got to give credit to on morgan as well for for getting the best out of him you know we we we've, we've had question marks over his captaincy f- 
from what we've seen in the Indian T20 league, and we've spoken about this in the past as well. His captaincy numbers in international cricket are outstanding. It's only yeah. question marks against you know when he's captaining either county sides, franchise sides, or his you know his his domestic T20 side. But at the international level, no questions. And I hold this for the same in this tournament as well. His captaincy has been outstanding. To the dot. True, very well said that. I'm also hoping to see that uh, England actually get to bat first today. And that is hmm. something that I'm looking forward to because uh, we've seen that teams batting second have had a had had quite an advantage. Uh, would love to see England batting first and see what kind of total that they can get to with the batting lineup that they have and the way that they play. Again, there is a chance that early wickets and they might have to have a course correction. But that is something that I'm very interested to see. I was speaking to a colleague of mine before the game yesterday. We were hopeful that you know we could get a 40-over a, a contest, which unfortunately didn't happen. But here's the thing. He he told me something interesting. With England, it could be a 220 for 8. You know, yeah. on If they bat first and if they carry on with their approach, it could be a 220 for 8 or it could be a 80 all out. So, be prepared yeah. for both. Yes, uh, that's exactly what I was saying. In, in, if they bat first, then it could be an interesting interesting set to see how they adapt, whether they try and adapt because this doesn't seem like a 200 kind of a 200 kind of pitch. So, it, it's going to be fun to watch that. Uh, Sri Lanka, for you, you're wearing, you're wearing a color closer to the Sri Lankan colors then. On form England, but I think they will be tested Akil because of the Sri, of the Sharjah surface in particular. So I'm just I think Sri Lanka might have their noses ahead just because of these two spinners. There's a good chance they could get in a third spinner as well today. Uh, mm -hmm. Akila Dananja is waiting in the wing, so there's a good chance that he could come in. Uh, and if, if he comes in, it'll be interesting to see how England counter those 12 overs of spin. So Sri Lanka have an edge for me tonight. Sri Lanka have an edge. I am still backing England. I just think that they also have two good spinners who are capable of uh, uh, getting wickets at the right time. So, England for me. Uh, interesting, the World Cup is now at, at almost a halfway stage. Every team has played two or three games. Uh, before, we, before we wrap, uh, don't give any logic, any reason. Just pick one team from each of the group who are going to top the table. Just your predictions now. I think it will stand the way it is, Akil. I think England and, and Pakistan are pretty much you know, favourites to top the, top the table. The two groups as it is. Hmm. England and Pakistan looking the most formidable teams. Alright, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back here at Time Out with Sports Adda talking about the rest of the games and leading up to the semi-final finals very soon.